Sharia Standard Number, 17, Investment Sukkuk, in the name of Allah, the All-Merciful, the Most Merciful, all praise be to Allah, the Lord of all the worlds, and blessings, and peace be upon our Master, Muhammad, and his household, and all his companions. Preface. The aim of this standard is to elaborate the Sharia rules for the issuance and trading of investment sukkuk, certificates, as well as the elaboration of their types, characteristics, Sharia regulations, and the conditions for the issuance of sukkuk and dealings in them for trading by Islamic financial institutions, institutions institutions. Statement of the Standard 1. Scope of the Standard This standard covers investment sukkuk. These sukkuk include sukkuk of ownership of leased assets, ownership of usufrux, ownership of services, murabaha, salam, istisna'e, mudaraba, musharaka, investment agency and in sharecropping, mazara, irrigation, nizakat, and agricultural, mugarasa, partnerships. The standard does not cover shares of joint stock companies, certificates of funds, and investment portfolios too. Definition of Investment Sukuk Investment Sukuk are certificates of equal value representing undivided shares in ownership of tangible assets, usufruct, and services or in the ownership of the assets of particular projects or special investment activity however, this is true after receipt of the value of the Sukuk. The closing of subscription and the employment of funds received for the purpose for which the sukuk were issued, in this standard, sukuk have been designated as investment. Sukuk in order to distinguish them from shares and bonds. 3. Types of investment sukuk Investment sukuk are of different types, and among these are, 3.1. Certificates of ownership and leased assets. These are certificates of equal value issued either by the owner of a leased asset or a tangible asset to be leased by promise, or they are issued by a financial intermediary acting on behalf of the owner with the aim of selling the asset and recovering its value through subscription so that the holders of the certificates become owners of the assets. 3.2. Certificates of Ownership of Usufrux. 3.2.1. Certificates of ownership of usufructs of existing assets These are two types. 3.2.1.1 Certificates of equal value issued by the owner of an existing asset either on his own or through a financial intermediary, with the aim of leasing the asset and receiving the rental from the revenue of subscription, so that the usufruct of the assets passes into the ownership of the holders of the certificates. 3.2.1.2 Certificates of equal value issued by the owner of the usufruct of an existing asset, lessee, either on his own or through a financial intermediary, with the aim of subleasing the usufruct and receiving the rental from the revenue of the subscription so that the holders of the certificates become owners of the usufruct of the asset. 3.2.2 Certificates of ownership of usufructs of described future assets. These are certificates of equal value issued for the purpose of leasing out tangible future assets and for collecting the rental from the subscription revenue, so that the usufruct of the described future asset passes into the ownership of the holders of the certificates. 3.2.3 Certificates of ownership of services of a specified party. These are certificates of equal value issued for the purpose of providing services through a specified provider such as educational benefits in a nominated university, and obtaining the service charges in the form of subscription income so that the holders of the certificates become owners of these services. 3.2.4 Certificates of ownership of described future services. These are certificates of equal value issued for the purpose of providing future services through described provider, such as educational benefits from a university without naming the educational institution and obtaining the fee in the form of subscription income so that the holders of the certificates become owners of the services. 3.3. Salam Certificates, Salam Sukuk. These are certificates of equal value issued for the purpose of mobilizing Salam capital so that the goods to be delivered on the basis of Salam come to be owned by the certificate holders. 3.4. Istisna Certificates, istisna -e Sukuk. These are certificates of equal value issued with the aim of mobilizing funds to be employed for the production of goods, so that the goods produced come to be owned by the certificate holders. 3.5. Murabaha Certificates, Murabaha Sukuk. These are certificates of equal value issued for the purpose of financing the purchase of goods through Murabaha, so that the certificate holders become the owners of the Murabaha commodity. 3.6. Musharaka Certificates, Musharaka Sukuk. These are certificates of equal value issued with the aim of using the mobilized funds for establishing a new project, 
developing an existing project, or financing a business activity on the basis of any of partnership contracts so that the certificate holders become the owners of the project or the assets of the activity as per their respective shares, with the Musharaka certificates being managed on the basis of participation or Mudaraba or an Investment Agency, 3.6.1 Participation Certificates these are certificates representing projects or activities managed on the basis of Musharaka by appointing one of the partners or another person to manage the operation. 3.6.2. Madaraba Sukuk, these are certificates that represent projects or activities managed on the basis of Madaraba by appointing one of the partners or another person as the mutarib for the management of the operation. 3.6.2. Investment Agency Sukuk. These are certificates that represent projects or activities managed on the basis of an investment agency by appointing an agent to manage the operation on behalf of the certificate holders. 3.7. Sharecropping certificates, Mazara Sukuk, these are certificates of equal value issued for the purpose of using the funds mobilized through subscription for financing a project on the basis of Mazara so that the certificate holders become entitled to a share in the crop according to the terms of the agreement. 3.8. Irrigation certificates, Musicat Sukuk, these are certificates of equal value issued for the purpose of employing the funds mobilized through subscription for the irrigation of fruit bearing trees, spending on them, and caring for them on the basis of a Musicat contract so that the certificate holders become entitled to a share in the crop as per agreement. 3.9. Agricultural certificates, Mugarasa Sukuk, these are certificates of equal value issued on the basis of a Mugarasa contract for the purpose of employing the funds for planting trees and undertaking the work and expenses required by such plantation so that the certificate holders become entitled to a share in the land and the plantation. 4. Characteristics of Investment Sukuk, 4.1. Investment sukuk are certificates of equal value issued in the name of the owner or bearer in order to establish the claim of the certificate owner over the financial rights and obligations represented by the certificate. 4.2. Investment sukuk represent a common share in the ownership of the assets made available for investment, whether these are non-monetary assets, usufructs, services, or a mixture of all these plus intangible rights, debts, and monetary assets. These sukuk do not represent a debt owed to the issuer by the certificate holder. 4.3. Investment sukuk are issued on the basis of a sharia nominated contract in accordance with the rules of sharia that govern their issuance and trading. 4.4. The trading of investment sukuk is subject to the terms that govern trading of the rights they represent. 4.5. The owners of these certificates share the return as stated in the subscription prospectus and bear the losses in proportion to the certificates owned, held, by them. 5. Sharia Rulings and Regulations, 5.1. Issuance of Investment Sukuk, 5.1.1. It is permissible to issue investment certificates by way of subscription on the basis of any of Sharia nominated investment contract, 5.1.2. It is permissible to issue certificates for, to securitize, assets that are tangible assets, usufructs and services by dividing them into equal shares and issuing certificates for their value. As for debts owed ASA liability, it is not permissible to securitize them for the purpose of trading. 5.1.3. The issue contract has all the legal effects of the contract upon which the issued certificates are based. This occurs after closing of the subscription and the allotment of the certificates, 5.1.4. The two parties of the issue contract are the issuer and the subscribers, 5.1.5. The relationship between the two parties to the issue contract is determined on the basis of the type of contract and its status in the sharia as well as the following description, 5.1.5.1. Certificates, certificates of ownership of leased assets, the issuer of these certificates is seller of a leased asset or an asset to be leased on promise, the subscribers are the buyers of the asset, while the funds mobilized through the subscription are the purchase price of the asset. The certificate holders jointly own the assets through an undivided ownership sharing the profits and losses on the basis of the partnership that exists between them. 5.1.5.2 Certificates of Ownership of Usufructs A. Certificates of Ownership of the Usufruct of Existing Assets the issuer of these certificates is the seller of usufruct of an existing asset, the subscribers are buyers of such usufruct, 
while the funds mobilized through subscription are the purchase price of the usufruct. The certificate holders become joint owners of the usufruct sharing its benefits and risks, b. Certificates of ownership of described usufruct to be made available in the future. The issuer of these certificates is the seller of usufruct of an asset to be made available in the future as per specification. The subscribers or buyers of the usufruct through the funds mobilized through subscription are the purchase price of the usufruct. The certificate holders become joint owners of the undivided usufruct sharing its benefits and risks, certificates of ownership of services. The issuer of these certificates is the seller of services, the subscribers are buyers of the services, while the funds mobilized through subscription are the purchase price of the services. The certificate holders are entitled to sell the profits of all the types that are listed at A, B, and C, and are entitled to the income from the resale of such. Usufruct 5.1.5.3 Salam Certificates, Salam Sukuk The issuer of the certificates is a seller of the goods of Salam, the subscribers are the buyers of the goods, while the funds realized from subscription are the purchase price, Salam Capital, of the goods. The holders of Salam certificates are the owners of the Salam goods and are entitled to the sale price of the certificates or the sale price of the Salam goods sold through a parallel Salam, if any, 5.1.5.4. Istisna certificates, Istisna e Sukuk, the issuer of these certificates is the manufacturer, supplier slash seller, the subscribers are the buyers of the intended product, while the funds realized from subscription are the cost of the product. The certificate holders own the product and are entitled to the sale price of the certificates or the sale price of the product sold on the basis of a parallel istisna a, if any, 5.1.5.5. Morabaha Certificates, Morabaha Sukuk, the issuer of the certificates is the seller of the Morabaha commodity, the subscribers are the buyers of that commodity, and the realized funds are the purchasing cost of the commodity. The certificate holders own the Morabaha commodity, and are entitled to its sale price, 5.1.5.6. Musharaka Certificates, Musharaka Sukuk, the issuer of the certificates is the inviter to a partnership with him in a specific project or determined activity. The subscribers are the partners in the Musharaka contract. The realized funds are the share contribution of the subscribers in the Musharaka capital. The certificate holders own the assets of partnership with the accompanying profits and losses, and are entitled to their share in the profits of the partnership, if any, 5.1.5.7. Madaraba Certificates, Madaraba Sukuk, the issuer of these certificates is the Mudarib, the subscribers are the owners of capital, and the realized funds are the Madaraba capital. The certificate holders own the assets of Madaraba, and the agreed-upon share of the profits belongs to the owners of capital, and they bear the loss, if any, 5.1.5.8. Certificates of Investment Agency, Wakala Sukuk, the issuer of these certificates is the investment agent, the subscribers are the principals, and the realized funds are the entrusted capital of the investment. The certificate holders own the assets represented by the certificates with its benefits and risks, and they are entitled to the profits, if any, 5.1.5.9. Muzara Certificates, Muzara Sukuk, a, the issuer of these certificates is the owner of the land, the principal owner or owner of the usufruct of the land. The subscribers are the cultivators on the basis of a Mazara contract, the cultivators or their assignees. The realized funds are the cultivation cost. B. The issuer of these certificate may be the cultivator, the worker, the subscribers or the owners of the land, investors whose subscription amounts are used to buy the land, and the certificate holders are entitled to a share of the produce of the land as per agreement, 5.1.5.10. Musicat Certificates, Musicat Sukuk, a. The issuer of these certificates is the owner, or owner of usufruct, of the land that consists of trees. The subscribers are those who assume the obligation of irrigation through a Musicat contract, while the realized funds are the maintaining cost of the trees. b. The issuer of these certificates may be the irrigator, the worker, and the subscribers are the owners of the land, investors whose subscription amounts are used to irrigate the land. The certificate holders are entitled to a share of the produce of the trees as per agreement, 5.1.5.11. Mugarasa Certificates, Mugarasa Sukuk, a. The issuer of these certificates is the owner of land suitable for planting, trees. The subscribers are those who assume the obligation of planting on the basis of a Mugarasa contract, 
while the realized funds are the cost of maintaining the plantation, b. The issuer may be the planter, the owner of the work, the subscribers are the owners of the land, investors whose subscription amounts are used to undertake plantation in the land, and the certificate holders are entitled to a share in both the trees and the land as per agreement. 5.1.6 The relationships between the parties, namely the issuer and the subscriber shall be governed by applicable contracts of issuing sukuk. The mere conclusion of the contract will give rise to legal effects with respect to rights and obligations of the parties. 5.1.7 The issuance of the prospectus represents the issuer's invitation to subscription, in which case the act of subscription represents an offer. As for acceptance, it is issuer's approval of the subscription, unless it is expressly stated in the prospectus that it is an offer. In this case, the prospectus will be considered as an offer and the subscription becomes an acceptance. 5.1.8 The following shall be observed in the prospectus of issue, 5.1.8.1. The prospectus must include all contractual conditions, adequate statements about the participants in the issue, their legal position, and rights as well as obligations, such as statements about the issue agent, issue manager, originator, investment trustee, the party covering the loss, payment agent as well as others along with the conditions of their appointment and dismissal. 5.1.8.2. The prospectus of Sukuk must include the identification of the contract on the basis of which the certificates are to be issued, such as sale of tangible leased assets, Ijara, Murabaha, Istisnae, Salam, Mudaraba, Musharaka, Wakala, Muzaraa, Mugarasa, or Musicat. 5.1.8.3. The contract that forms the basis of the issue must be complete with respect to its elements and conditions and should not include conditions that conflict with its objectives and rules, 5.1.8.4. The prospectus must explicitly mention the obligation to abide by the rules and principles of the Sharia, and that there is a Sharia supervisory board that approves the procedures of the issues and monitors the implementation of the project throughout its duration, 5.1.8.5. The prospectus must state that the investment of the realized funds and the assets into which the funds are converted will be undertaken through Sharia compliant modes of investment. 5.1.8.6. Taking into account item 3.1.5. Of the Sharia standard number 12 on Sharika, Musharaka, and modern corporations, the prospectus must state that each owner of a certificate participates in the profit and bears a loss in proportion to the financial value represented by his certificates. 5.1.8.7. The prospectus must not include any statement to the effect that the issuer of the certificate accepts the liability to compensate the owner of the certificate up to the nominal value of the certificate in situations other than torts and negligence nor that he guarantees a fixed percentage of profit. It is, however, permitted to an independent third party to provide a guarantee free of charge, while taking into account item 7.6. Of Sharia Standard Number 5 on guarantees. It is also permitted to the issuer of the certificate to offer some tangible or personal guarantees with respect to its wrongful acts or negligence, while taking into account item 3.1.4.3. Of Sharia Standard Number 12 on Sharika, Musharaka, and modern corporations, as well as the contract stated in that standard, 5.1.9. It is permissible for the institution to undertake to underwrite the unsubscribed issue, in which case the obligation of the underwriter is based on a binding promise. The underwriter should not receive any commission in lieu of such underwriting taking into account item 4.1.2.4. Of Sharia Standard Number 12 on Sharika, Musharaka, and Modern Corporations, 5.1.10. It is permissible to issue sukuk on a short-term, medium-term, or long-term basis in accordance with the principles of the sharia. The sukuk may also be issued without specifying a period depending upon the nature of the contract underlying the sukuk issue, 5.1.11. It is permissible for the issuer or the certificate holders to adopt permissible methods of managing risk, of mitigating fluctuation of distributable profits, profit equalization reserve, such as establishing an Islamic insurance fund with contributions of certificate holders, or by participating in insurance, takaful, by payment of premiums from the income of the shares of sukuk holders, or through donations, to borrower, made by the sukuk holders, 5.2. Trading of sukuk and their redemption, 5.2.1. It is permissible, after closing subscription, 
allotment of sukuk and commencement of activity, to trade in and redeem investment sukuk that represent common ownership of tangible assets, usufructs, or services. As for trading or redemption prior to the commencement of activity, it is necessary to observe the rules of the contract of SARF, currency exchange, along with the rules for debts, receivables, when liquidation is complete, and the assets are receivables, or when the assets represented by the sukuk are sold for a deferred price, 5.2.2. In the case of negotiable sukuk, it is permissible for the issuer to undertake, through the prospectus of issue, to purchase at market value, after the completion of the process of issue, any certificate that may be offered to him however, it is not permissible for the issuer to undertake to purchase the sukuk at their nominal value, 5.2.3. The certificates may be traded through any known means, that do not contravene the rules of the sharia, such as registration, electronic means, or actual transmission by the bearer to the purchaser, 5.2.4. It is permissible, immediately upon issue and up to the date of maturity, but after the passing of ownership of the assets to the holders of the sukuk, to trade in sukuk that represent ownership of existing leased assets or assets to be leased on promise, 5.2.5. It is permissible for the issuer to redeem, prior to maturity, certificates of ownership of leased assets at the market price or at a rate agreed upon, at the date of redemption, between the certificate holder and the issuer, 5.2.6. It is permissible to trade in securities of ownership of usufructs of tangible assets prior to a contract for subleasing the assets. When the assets are subleased, the certificate represents rent receivables, which makes it a debt owed by the second lessor subject to the rules and regulations for disposal of debts, 5.2.7. It is permissible for the issuer to redeem sukuk of ownership of the usufruct of tangible assets from the holder, after allotment and payment of the subscription price, at the market price, or at a price agreed upon between the parties at the time of redemption, on the condition that the subscription amount or redemption price is not deferred. See Item 3.4, of Sharia Standard Number 9, on Ijara and Ijara Muntehi Abidamlik, 5.2.8. It is not permissible to trade in certificates of ownership of usufructs of a described asset before the asset from which usufruct is to be made available is ascertained except by observing the rules for disposal of receivables. When the asset is ascertained, trading in sukuk of usufructs of such asset may take place, 5.2.9. It is permissible to trade in securities of ownership of services to be provided by a specified party prior to subleasing such services. When the services are subleased, the certificate represents rent receivables to be collected from the second lessee. In this case, the certificate represents a debt and is, therefore, subject to the rules and regulations of disposal of debts, 5.2.10. It is not permissible to trade in securities of ownership of services to be provided by a party to be specified in the future before the source from which the services would be provided is identified, except by observing the rules for dealing in debts. When the source of services is identified, trading in such sukuk may take place, 5.2.11. It is permissible to set up a parallel ijara on tangible assets by employing the same description for the usufruct that was provided to the holders of the sukuk in cases detailed in items 5.2.8 and May 2, 10. Provided the two lease contracts remain independent, 5.2.12. It is permissible for the second buyer of the usufruct of existing and specified assets to resell them. The buyer is also entitled to issue certificates in this respect, 5.2.13. It is permissible to trade in or redeem istisna certificates if the funds have been converted, within the period of the istisna, into assets owned by certificate holders. If the realized funds are immediately paid as a price in a parallel istisna contract or the manufactured item is submitted to the ultimate purchaser, then trading in istisna certificates is subject to rules of disposal of debts. 5.2.14. It is not permissible to trade in Salam certificates, 5.2.15. It is not permissible to trade in Murabaha certificates after delivery of the Murabaha commodity to the buyer. However, trading of Murabaha certificates is permissible after purchasing the Murabaha commodity and before selling it to the buyer, 5.2.16. It is permissible to trade in Madaraba, Musharaka, and investment agency certificates after closing of subscription, 
allotment of the certificates and commencement of activity with respect to the assets and usufrux, 5.2.17. It is permissible to trade in Mozaroa and Musicat certificates after closing of subscription, allotment of certificates and commencement of activity with respect to the assets and usufrux. This rule applies when the certificate holders own the land. Thus, trading in these certificates is not allowed where the certificate holders act as workers, who undertake to provide agricultural or irrigation works, in which case trading in these certificates is not permissible before the maturity of the fruits and plants, 5.2.18. It is permissible to trade in Mugarasa certificates after closing of subscription, allotment of certificates and commencement of activity irrespective of the certificate holders being owners of the land or workers.